Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and uh, this is a video I was not expecting to make when I woke up this morning. Uh, basically, Microsoft is going all in on open source. Well, not quite all in. They're still, you know, a proprietary software company, so Windows is still mostly closed source. Office is mostly closed source, but the important part of it is those patents. The stuff, the technology that Microsoft owns, well, they just basically donated it to the Linux Foundation. Well, not technically the Linux Foundation, OIN, but the same end results. This is a huge development, and if you're a Linux user, there are no downsides here that I can see. So let's jump in a little bit about exactly what happened, who the OIN is, and what this actually means to you or me. So, Microsoft's open source its pat patent portfolio. By joining the OIN, Microsoft is offering its entire patent portfolio with the legacy exception of its Windows and desktop application code. So again, those are not going open source uh, to all of the open source patent consortiums members. Now, OIN is kind of a defensive patent act. We'll get back to that in a bit, but let's look at this particular headline. Now, this is a ZDNet article that broke the story, and I will, of course, link this down below. Uh, but this is before Microsoft joined, OIN had more than 2,650 community members and owns more than 1,300 global patents and applications. OIN is the largest patent non-aggression community in history and represents a core set of open source intellectual property values. Its members include Google, IBM, Red Hat, and SUSE. OIN patent licenses and member, um, member cross licenses are available royalty free to anyone that joins the OIN community. So basically, you come into the OIN, you, you contribute your patents in, you can join it and um, if any, you know, patent troll or lawyer kind of comes against you or tries to challenge you, you have this huge bank of your own patents to work on for defense. And it's one of those things that was really important to the success of Linux, because Linux was not really designed in a corporate environment, obviously. And so there isn't a huge patent portfolio behind it. So companies like Google, IBM, and Red Hat, and SUS kind of got together, threw their patents together so that it's a big enough guy. You've got a big enough swing in patent portfolio that if someone swings at you, you can hit them back just as hard. And that's kind of the idea behind it. So you can see right here, um, OIN CEO comments on a Microsoft announcement in an interview. This is everything Microsoft has, and it covers everything related to older open source technologies such as Android, Linux kernel, and OpenStack, plus newer technologies such as LF Energy and Hyperledger, and their predecessors and successor versions. So those patents are now available to all the OIN folks. You can use that technology royalty free, not paying anything to Microsoft which is actually a pretty big deal um, because you can see right here, how does this affect Microsoft? Microsoft is bringing 60,000 patents to the OIN, 60,000. Okay, now let's put that number in perspective. Let's go back up here. Right now they have 1,300 patents. So now they have 1,300, uh, sorry, uh, 60,000, 61,300 patents. So this is an order to of magnitude growth in the OIN's patent portfolio. Um, but you can also see Microsoft is actually going to lose money over this. Now, don't cry for Microsoft. They make tens of billions of dollars a year. And this $3.4 billion from its Android patents is lifetime since 2014 or yeah, as of 2014. So they're getting all kinds of money, especially from companies like Samsung, for licensing their pat um, the, from their palette. Uh, sorry, their patents. So what's going to happen here is if Samsung joins and throws their patents into the ring here at OIN, they have access to the Microsoft patents royalty free. So they can save themselves a billion dollars a year for also getting in on this. But it also will protect uh, Linux and Android and various other derived works from any kind of patent trolls, patent lawsuits, that kind of thing. It makes uh, Linux a whole lot more legally sound. Now, I know a lot of people like to dump on Microsoft, and honestly, I don't get it anymore. Now, I understand back in the days of you know Embrace, Extend, Extinguish, uh, when they went to war on Java and they went to war on Linux, but we're talking 10 years ago. Lately, all of those people are gone. You know, um, Steve Ballmer, who was probably the number one asshole in chief at Microsoft, he's long gone. Bill Gates, he's gone. The guys running the company are gone. Steven Sinefsky or something along those lines, the guy that ran the Windows team and all that, he's gone. So the people that you have left now are people like Scott Guthrie, who is a developer. There's a new CIO, a new CEO. The team at Microsoft is very, very, very different than they were in the past, and they've been this way for years now, to be honest. So people that look towards Microsoft as an enemy on open source, I just don't understand this anymore. They are... I don't know. If I look at the big tech companies, if I look at Android, oh, sorry, um, if I look at Google, Apple, uh, Amazon, and then Microsoft, and I look at those and I look at the last five years, which company did more evil or dickish things? And 
let's put it this way. Microsoft is very much the bottom of that list, like way down at the bottom of that list. Those other three companies have committed so much more evil recently that it's not even funny to compare them. So I don't get this Microsoft hate uh, when it comes to the open source world and they're getting more and more and more so that, that I just, I don't see with a move like this, how you can look at Microsoft as anything other than open source friendly these days, to be honest. Now, obviously they compete with Linux and you know, they're not gonna stop making Windows, but they're doing so in a way that isn't dickish now. They're not trying to compete on, you know, patent grounds, on, on, on lawsuits, that kind of stuff. It's, I don't know, it's, it's a new Microsoft. And speaking of that, we'll look at some of Microsoft's open source commitments because you'd probably be shocked by just how active Microsoft is in the open source community before this move. And of course, they also just recently bought GitHub. Um, so that's obviously gonna make them a hub of open source development going forward. And they do obviously want people to think that they are all in, but I, they do seem to be all in at this point in time. This is a huge move. So what exactly is OIN? Well, this second paragraph pretty much sums it up the best. The OIN is a shared defensive patent pool with the mission to protect Linux. Launched in 2005, OIN has a strong industry support with backing from Google, IBM, NEC, Philip, Red Hat, Sony, SUSE, and Toyota. Any company, project, or developer that is working on Linux, GNU, Android, or any other Linux-related software is welcome to join OIN free of charge or royalties. So if Samsung wants to get on board and again save themselves a billion dollars in license patenting, they can. It's it's pretty uh, pretty good actually. This again, this is a mutual defense pack here. So if you're in the OIN, you have access to all those other patents, and you're kind of immune to. Uh, patent trolls on those areas. And it's not gonna get rid of patent trolls, unfortunately, because the US patent system is just absolutely broken. But this does help defend those smaller projects from it, because it gives them a huge patent portfolio to fight back with. And obviously, these aren't, aren't small companies that we're talking about right here, but it, it, it really helps the smaller guys as well, obviously. Now, in terms of back to Microsoft themselves, you may not know this, Microsoft is contributing thousands upon thousands of open source projects. Like we're actually, they have opensource.microsoft.com, which is basically a list of all of their open source projects. And one thing that happened was Microsoft first embraced open source, embraced <laughs> uh, back like seven, eight, nine years ago, they started releasing things like .NET uh, libraries under reference lawyers. They created their own open source, you know, semi-compatible licenses and they were BS. And I get everyone kind of saw that, but it's changed since. Now most of these projects are, MIT licensed or Zlib licensed or Apache licensed, real honest to goodness, open source licenses like you would expect from the, the major community projects out there. And you can see they've got projects out there like Visual Studio Code, which I think is MIT licensed, TypeScript, the entire programming language, open source, CoreFX, which is the foundational library and .NET, it is all open sourced, PowerShell, um, they even open source their old MS DOS. Stuff. Now this is under a proprietary license or a, a strange license, but really who needs MS DOS 2.0 at this point in time? .NET is open source now. And we just kind of keep going and going. And, and the biggest thing I want you to notice is the Roslyn compiler, the .NET Core, Chakra Core, the, the uh, JavaScript runtime that powers Microsoft Edge. These are all open source projects right now. And you will see, we are talking, this is page two of 819. So they have over 8,000. Yeah, I know there's a Dragon Ball joke there somewhere. But they have over 8,000 open source projects in this collection right here, and there's more and more every day. More and more of uh, the stuff that is starting inside of Microsoft is being started in an open source manner. They have hired developers or brought in developers where are very open source first. When buying um, the Mono team, uh, they acquired um, Nat Friedman, who has been a champion of open source for years and years. And he's actually, it was his tweet that led to this entire uh, post for me in the first place. So he is definitely a champion of open source and there are, he's gonna be the guy in charge of GitHub if that ever gets through regulations or whatever goes on there. So Microsoft is a much different company today. <sighs> All right, so that's it. So again, Windows not open source, um, Office not open source, but other than that, pretty much, yeah. It's as close to a full open source company as they can get. They are now as open source as Google, way more so than Apple. And you say, wait, wait a minute, Google's very open source. Well, no, really, are they? Can you get in and see the uh, secret sauce behind the stuff that they make money off of? You know, is YouTube all open sourced? Is uh, their Google search engine all open sourced? Is Gmail all completely open sourced? Is uh, AdSense all open sourced? Double click, is that all open source? No, of course it's not. So these companies are still all proprietary to a certain degree, but the way they work with and contribute to the open source community is what we should judge them on 
in the perspective of open source. And frankly, again, Microsoft is kind of the best of the four right now, in my opinion. Obviously, I know many people are going to have many other people. There's, there's going to be the people out there that write, you know, the MS or the dollar sign for all of life and judge them on the sins of their father's father's father. But there might be some real good, legitimate, modern beefs against Microsoft that I'm just not aware of. Uh, you know, I can understand being wary or apprehensive of any billion dollar company. And right, we should. They, their interests don't necessarily align with ours. But so far as, you know, Apples to, oh, pun not intended, apples to apples comparison between big corporate companies, I think Microsoft is, again, one of the best ones right now. So I'd be interested to hear what your opinion is down below. And more importantly, I would love to hear where I'm wrong on this. If there's been something in Microsoft's recent history where we can say, ooh, we can't trust them in open source because of this, I would love to hear that. Let me know that in the comments down below. Now, I know this is going to probably be a slightly polarizing subject, so please let's try to keep things as civil as possible in the comments. All right, that's it for now. Uh, <laughs> looking forward to reading about it all down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.